I absolutely love how much of a scam this week's episode of Soul Leveling was. Jinwoo swindling that fool at the end was glorious to behold because not only was it the biggest dick energy you could do, I mean using stealth, basically something that would be normally used for assassinations, to do the simplest of cuts, but damn if paper cuts can't be some of the most painful shit you'll experience. Imagine not being able to see where he is, not being able to sense where he is, and he was able to get that up on you. It's pretty much saying, I can kill you if I want, make sure you don't make me mad, don't, don't turn around, you stay where you are. And then it ends into a conversation where it's like, yeah, you know, I was offered like something worth pretty much 30 billion, so I'll take your 50 billion building, but you know, I, I know you're not going to do that, so here, how about this? I'll be a generous person. I'll give you three of our gates. 300 mil a pop. What are you talking about? It's only 200 million per if it's on a real good day. He's like, mm, you know what? 200 million it is. Like, basically, you would break even at best if on a really good day, if that's how it would go. And then the next day, like, the 70 millions pop up and it's like, hey, now we're even for you spying on me, bitch. And I'm like, this is the most polite and intimidating way to swindle and scam someone. And I don't know, I generally enjoy the side cast and what they have to offer. And what a beautiful scam of an episode this week's episode of Soul Leveling was. Full live reaction over on my Patreon if you want to see my full and cut thoughts. Of course, it's over there if you're interested alongside all these wonderful episodes. Now... One of my, I think, favorite parts actually comes at the very beginning of this episode. I think it, many people probably won't talk about it, but I love the idea of what's going on with like, I like it when characters have actual trauma that lasts and doesn't just get brushed under the rug because sometimes you can bury your trauma and be fine for a long time before other stuff pops up. But the idea that with the first couple of episodes with that double dungeon, I mean, that was, that would fuck with most people. Like, I don't think there's any other way to put that. And to have a girl who's, you know, who knows where she's supposed to go, the level of dungeons and threats she's supposed to clear, and she's going for the lowest of the low and barely able to do that. She recognizes something is wrong and she's scared shitless. And the idea that for at face value, if you look at these two, they're very much in a point of like, yeah, you know, we're, we're here for each other. If you're in the neighborhood, let's hang out. And there's this animation detail where as she's turning away from him, you know, she has a happy-ish looking face. But as soon as she's no longer facing, you see her face sink into just depression as she walks off. Those little moments go a hell of a long way, whether it was back when she was talking on the phone with her mother and she was just so depressed and isolated to something like this. It just goes a long way and once again makes this show more than just here's an edgy guy killing people or swinging a sword around becoming the all time best. No, like the show's actually well written and the idea of watching someone Another point of big dick energy, so we hired a group so we could take on the raids, right? Like these dungeons, because there is a party limit. So they're getting paid, I think it was 3 million a day up to 9 million, so they'll do up to 3 dungeons a day if all goes according to plan, and they just sit there. They have a picnic, they play a game, they, they literally sleep, it doesn't matter. And it seems too good to be true, because what dumbass would pay someone 3 million to sit on their ass as these two dumbasses go get themselves killed? Like, that's what everyone's expecting, or they're gonna run away. And just the fact that he walks out, not even breaking a sweat. Good, moving on to the next one. At one point, so we don't get to see a lot of what happened in these dungeons, but it's fine. They're, they're smaller dungeons, and it's honestly more impressive just seeing them casually walk out. At one point, he's fighting with his arm in his hoodie. One of his arms is resting as he's swinging around, cutting at it. He was slicing him. Didn't even give a, a rat's furry ass. He just was him. And watching our boy just scurry playing Minecraft. I got this crystal. I got this crystal. It's like, yo, they're built different. And I like the fact that he's also self-aware enough to be like, okay, I'm probably like somewhere between a B rank and A rank. I can't take this, you know, dungeon that I really want to. So basically, you know, he's very much, he wants to get that cure for his mother. Of course he does. But he's recognizing like, I will die, I will die if I jump into it right now. So he has to bide his time and he has to get stronger. I mean, most importantly, because in this episode, they remind us. Completely slipped my mind because of everything that's been happening recently. The the people we killed in the second incident, uh, his brother wants to kill them. And basically it's like, get out of the country or become an S rank and be above the law. And being above the law is pretty much the only thing he can do at this point, so he has to get stronger. And they're doing a good job with it. But overall, it just was... I was actually expecting a slower style episode. I was expecting a lot more dialogue and, you know, just not a lot of, like, excitingly fun things, but more so important to get the world and characterization and moving forward. But this was great. This was an absolute treat to watch. I enjoyed it. 
I like seeing that our main character is actually really clever and not just someone who's like, okay, now that he has this game menu in his in his HUD, right? That he's just, okay, it tells him what to do or he just says, I swing big sword and I get strong. No, he's like, oh, hey, you know, things like, oh, you know, the only thing is a lot of these new skills, I can't really use a lot of them because my mana depletes. I got to focus on intelligence now. He's not someone who's just like, okay, I'm going to get 999 strength and that's that. He understands and thinks things through. And while he's definitely a lot more intimidating and frightening, I appreciate that he still feels like someone you want to root for and see succeed at the end of the day. I mean, the uh, system ended up saying that he reached the required level and he's in for a job change, which I'm interested to see where that's going to go. So that's seemingly his next episode, at least based on how he wanted some time off. And obviously, you know, we're thinking about it going off into the sunset. I don't know, but... You know, this is the type of episode that it real like, if we didn't have episodes prior to this, I guess it would be harder to, you know, claim otherwise, but, like, I like the fact that it's not just like, okay, big fight, big fight, big fight, big fight, boring episode. It's like, big fight, great buildup of characters and world. Big fight, great buildup of characters and world. And honestly, this one was just so fun. It was so simple, but it just... You got to really see the character psyche more, and once again got to see how much bigger this world is from just the MC, which in the manhwa, from what I'm told, I know the light novel's probably different, or the novel, whatever it is, but um, apparently a lot of times characters just feel like they don't exist if our MC isn't interacting with them, where in the anime, they're doing a great job of making them feel like people with interesting stories, and honestly, that whole, like, I investigated him, I want him on our side, now this guy's kind of shit out of luck, he overspent, but he can't really say much unless he wants to get his ass fired, hell, he might even get his ass fired as it stands, I don't know, but good episode, very good episode in my opinion, but I'm sure some people will continue to prove me wrong and say, no, we're here just for the action, that's not even me making sly remarks and implying, I get those comments, I get people boldly say I only watch for the action and these episodes suck because it's not action. I love the anime community. And honestly, I mean, it's it's self-explanatory, but anytime this man makes an OST, whether it's for soul leveling, whether it's for Attack on Titan, this shit just slaps. Like, the OST just, it's... Ugh. On one hand, you want someone like this to make most of the anime OSTs, but there's a lot of really talented people. But this, uh, the music and just the production, it just, it, it makes me smile. It makes me happy. It makes me giggly, and I like that. Let me know your feelings, though, down below. What did you think? Your favorite moment? What do you hope to see next week? Let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring the bell so you can know if I went up a little more. And like I mentioned, full live reaction over on my Patreon. Hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. All right, so today we got Waka, Merc, Sebastian Just, Renchon, Achilles, and Keegan Miller. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.